there's nothing that says that in your brain you have to continue to breathe. It's, it's a natural function. So when it comes to stress in our body, we don't have any natural function. We don't have any organ that's like, okay, that continues to pump or continues to work to reduce stress. So the problem is, is that we continue to raise our stress levels and then we get stressed out and then we lose our mind. And then all kinds of crazy things happen. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in, for being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. Okay, let me share some of my stress tips for you. And this is something that we talk about often. I used to try to do everything stress detox. Everything, I think all my blog posts or videos was all stress detox for maybe a year or two. It was just, I don't know, maybe I'm not sure why I kind of got away from that. Stress is something that we, we still focus on. It's just not the only thing. I just, I thought that narrowed our, everyone's like niche down niche down and I'm like okay so I tried to get a very small niche and I felt like I was limiting myself at any rate I guess when it comes to reducing stress it's first of all it's worth noting that we don't have anything to like there's no system in our body like all of our organs do something like our, our body is designed it's so incredible how our body was designed one of my favorite things about the body and how it's designed is how our body is a giant defense mechanism so when you're doing like weights, let's say you're doing curls, for example. So your body puts a certain amount of stress on your biceps as you curl to help them grow back bigger next time. So if you put that same amount of stress on it, it'll be able to handle that same movement and motion. Of course, many of us may know that you always want to change up your workouts and, and it's called muscle confusion. So your body doesn't adapt and change, which means, which is called the plateau in the fitness world, and you get, and you stop seeing results. Which is why we change our workouts up every time. They're always a different order, or a different set, or a different exercise. And it's be, so because of that, we won't keep wanting to continue to change the different stresses we're putting in our body in a good way. So you could argue that you're putting stress on your heart and lungs, for example, when you're working out but that's a good stress. This stress that we're talking about today isn't necessarily, well, certainly isn't good stress. Okay, so the defense mechanism of the body is, you know, when you you work out your heart and lungs, for example, they are, they get stronger, for example. They they are able to take, take on more stress and they are able to make your body healthier for a number of different reasons. But when we look at the different organs or different functions of our body, we don't have an actual pump. It's like our lymph nodes. Our lymph nodes don't actually have a pump to help us like detox out of our body. We have to do things like exercise or like I've read those vibration machines work really well for that or bouncing on a trampoline like that would help clear out your lymph nodes, for example. How, and you know what's interesting is your lymph nodes are in your brain and when you sleep, those lymph nodes are detoxed through your sleep. So that's pretty interesting too, at least for me. But what I'm saying is when it comes to stress is that you don't, our body, there's nothing in our body, there's no organ or there's no function that will naturally reduce stress. Like when we're breathing, you don't consciously breathe. You're not like, okay, don't forget to breathe. <laughs> you may forget to you may forget to take deep breaths, especially when you're stressed out. But <laughs> there's nothing that says that in your brain you have to continue to breathe. It's, it's a natural function. So when it comes to stress in our body, we don't have any natural function. We don't have any organ that's like, okay, that continues to pump or continues to work to reduce stress. So the problem is, is that we continue to raise our stress levels and then we get stressed out and then we lose our mind. And then all kinds of crazy things happen to our bodies while we're stressed out and we don't do anything to 
reduce that stress. So that's the very basics of what I want to talk about this morning. And I will, I'll get into that more here in a second. Okay, so that's the very basic is, uh, basics of understanding that there's no real function that will reduce stress in our body. So we have to take action. We continually to get we t- <laughs> we continually get stressed out. So if you look at, I like to look at a cup for example. That's why I went like this. I like to look at a cup for example, and like we have a stress limit. Like you have, let's get a true form cup. You have a limit to your stress level. So let's say you are late, you wake up late. So your stress levels increase and then you're late for work and then something happens with the kids and something happens with the pets and then something happens with your coworkers. So our cups are overflowing with stress and there's nothing to reduce the level of stress in our cup unless we take action, unless we do something about that. So. It's important to know, understand that you have to take action towards reducing stress. And for me, I honestly feel on a, on a deeper level, the internal health issues that we deal with because of our stress levels sooner or later show up on the outside of our body, which is where injuries come from, which is where major disease comes from, chronic pain, inflammation. Don't get me wrong. We do talk about exercise. We talk about food, ingredients, oils, rancid oils. Those all play an important factor in our stress levels as well or in our health levels or inflammation levels. But when it comes to our stress levels, those all play important factors, especially that stress that continues, continually builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And then it has nowhere. There's no, there's, there's no release valve. You can't open a tube in your body. That's like (laughs) ah, reduce stress. It doesn't work like that. We have to take action to do things to reduce stress. And in most cases, we don't. That's why we deal with those chronic issues that we continually are trying to work through. I hear like you see people on social media, they're often like, I'm so tired of these headaches. I'm so tired of feeling horrible. But then you look at different ways people live, your lifestyle, and then you say, okay, well, what are you doing to reduce your stress levels? And in most cases, people don't know how stressed out they are because it becomes normal, it becomes natural. But the problem is that it becomes so normal that it's not natural and we live a very challenging, like many people don't sleep very well, you don't sleep throughout the night. And here's the the funny thing is that when we talk to people and say, well, you should probably have sex, it really depends on like, you have to get a deep sleep. If you are sleeping for, if you're sleeping, let's say you're in bed (laughs) for 10 hours, and you get four hours or you're sleeping like every two hours, you're up for a half hour, you're up for five minutes and you're up for, you know, different intervals. You're not getting a deep sleep, an REM sleep. You're not, um, you're not getting that full night. Maybe you're up flipping through your phone, but you're still like, I'm in bed. I slept for 10 hours, whatever it is. That's not a deep sleep. That's not the sleep that's going to heal and rejuvenate your body and help you reduce stress as well. So, if you get six hours of solid sleep, that's much better than sleep. You know, I think we've all been there when you're like kind of half awake and you're in and out. Like many of us are stressed out. We got lots of things on our mind. Like, you know, these things always come up in, in our lives. Like that's part of life is could be, could be your parents, it could be your family, it could be your children, you know, pets I talked about earlier, whatever it is, we don't always sleep deeply. And so what I'm saying is that if you sleep for 10 hours and you're in and out of sleep, it's much better to get six hours. The problem is, is that most people don't get that deep sleep, that consistent deep sleep for a block of time. So they're like, "Ah, I only need four hours. I function pretty good. And I'm like, when's the last time you slept for seven hours straight? And then they get blank look. They have no idea. So that's the difference of when I'm talking about sleep. But in most cases, people don't know what it's like to get a really good night's sleep. So they have nothing to compare it to. And it's the same thing with same thing with workouts. For example, people, ah, I don't really need to work out that much. And then I say, well, when's the last time you worked out for, for you know, three, four, five times in a week for a month? And most people just haven't done that. So they don't know what it's like to feel rejuvenated and energized and motivated and have mental clarity. So 
what I'm, so what I'm talking about here is, and it, there's there's a lot of different factors when it comes to sleep in particular, but today I'm focusing on reducing stress in particular, and I'm I'm kind of working my way back. Is that I'm trying to help you understand that first of all, we don't have any way to reduce stress in our body. Like everyone builds up stress, but not everyone re- releases stress or reduces stress. So we there's no function in our body that helps us reduce stress in our lives. And then major issues come up in our life because of stress. Major, there's so many problems that we deal with, but I feel like most of that can be related to stress in one way or another. But then, I mean, you can take that out of context. But I mean, it doesn't matter how much stress level you have if you have a really like sedentary lifestyle and you have a, and you don't eat very well, if you eat fast food and, you, and you're not moving and you hang out in a negative environment, like, it doesn't really matter how high your stress levels is. That's just going to contribute to your stress levels and increase it. And, that, and that's an important subject is understanding that food also plays a factor in your stress levels. And you know what the thing is? A lot of people don't realize that food also increases your stress levels. So if we are stressed out to begin with, and then we're putting s- stressful types of food in our body that put more stress on we're only increasing our stress levels and then sometimes we have you could look at nicotine caffeine alcohol tobacco refined sugar those increase our stress levels and one of the biggest issues here is that if you want to talk about but we don't specialize in weight loss in fact as soon as someone comes to me and says i want to lose weight i say we don't do uh i say we don't do weight loss (laughs) so but Everyone wants to lose weight or drop inches or feel better about their waist size. And the thing is, when you're stressed out, you increase your cortisol levels. And when you increase your cortisol levels, your body changes its function. And it, it's not in a, I think it's more of in a, almost in a fight or flight mode. So you're constantly in that mode. So your body is just hanging on. It's not functioning properly. It's just think of it, just think of everything like all tight and restricted and you're not easy and natural and flowing so your body isn't able to reduce body fat you're not able to um you're not able to lose weight you're not able to drop inches because you're so stressed out because our cortisol levels are so high so that's an, another important factor so you could say some people that are like here's an issue is that a lot of people say well i've been eating really well so let's just say for example we have our, our sugar detox that we've done in the past we're going to do another one here coming up very soon so we have our sugar detox that's that's 10 days let's just say for example 10 day crash course on how to live a healthy lifestyle not how to drop weight in 10 days that's not what we do even though some people have lost weight but then you have someone maybe they join our fitness family after that and they're with us for two to three months and they feel like they've been doing better with food they've been exercising regularly but their stress levels are through the roof well your body is is basically you know it's in a battle it's in a war <laughs> so your body is like i'm feeling good i'm trying to drop some inches i'm eating better i'm working out but your stress levels are so high so you're it's kind of like going back and forth it's like i'm eating i'm eating well you know so you're like oh i'm eating well maybe i can drop some inches and then your stress goes up so those inches they're coming back and you're like oh i'm dropping a few pounds i'm feeling good and your stress levels high cortisol levels are up and you're like no nope. your body's like no nope, sorry too stressed out to drop inches so <laughs> it's a constant battle and i think we've all been there with our minds of like should i do that like indecisions right should i do that should i do this that's what your body is like your body is like i don't really know what you want from me are we in a fight or flight mode are we preserving are we trying to hold to on to everything we have it's like like we were hunters and gatherers right we we when we originated you move from one place to another you know i think like nomads for example i really feel like that's like on a deeper level i think that's why most, so, so many people like to travel is because i don't feel like we were meant to be in one place for our entire lives and don't get me wrong if someone wants to be some people are like i don't want to travel i don't want to go see the world i don't want to go on vacation i'm happy here doing my thing which is perfectly fine but i think the good majority of people they want to experience or they want to get away or they want to travel and, and and when they don't they feel cooped up and i feel like we were meant to travel and we were meant to go and see new lands and new new sites and new visions 
but that's this but that but that comes back to when you're looking at how stressed out our body is and how our body is functioning our body was meant to function stress free but if you're in this if you're constantly in that stressed out fight or flight mode just like our bodies weren't meant for that thing our bodies were meant to travel and move and hunt and that's why that's why we have that like that's why we have those feelings like i'm not exactly sure what they're called that's why we have those reactions in our body of like fight or flight because we used to hunt and if there were and it was it, it would it protected our body so if there was a an opportunity where you had to fight for your food or you had to fight an animal <laughs> you were to protect yourself from surviving you would either fight which would increase your stress levels everything's going crazy and vibrating or you would flight you would run and so when you're in that mode everything is completely stressed out you're basically just in survival mode your body's not like oh maybe i should burn some body fat today <laughs> it's like oh my gosh i gotta get out of here so i can survive <laughs> and then so just think it's kind of funny that's why i'm laughing but so think about that like right now we, we of course we live in a different world we don't hunt most people don't hunt and most of the, and most of the time you're not you're not in fear of your life to be attacked by another tribe or or by unless you run a business <laughs> by another tribe or by wild animals right so <laughs> your body isn't used to being in that stage it doesn't need to be in that stage but now that we're like stressed out from work and from family and for finances but our body's like constantly constantly stressed out and our, and then we don't and we, so we don't function properly that's why we don't sleep that's why we're not able to burn body fat that's why we have mind fog so um <laughs> that was a fun little explanation dorothy's one of those people as well i think every that needs to travel and everyone's a bit different but i feel like even if it, it's it depends like some people like to go to the other side of the world some people like to go to a different town you know when you go for like a weekend drive it happens in the country i grew up in the city you didn't really go for a weekend drive in the country very often but when you live in a small town you get that like small town <laughs> small well i did i don't know and well dorothy grew up in a small town too though so do you get that like claustrophobia dorothy of like this town is very small and then you have like small town gossip that you don't have in a big city <laughs> And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> you know what? When I moved to Old, that was one of the most challenging things that I, I dealt with is this, this small town gossip and like clicky or like you hang out with these people or all these people know each other and then they don't hang out with those other people. And I'm like, of course, yeah, that happens in high school, but like as an adult <laughs> or like so-and-so said this and you know, it's like, it's so different. And I don't mean to... Um, I, I really enjoy old it was uh it's a it's a good place to be i just it's just very different from from wh from where i grew up to like i grew up in calgary it's a big city and it's it's completely different compared to a small town but there's definitely benefits of living in a small town as well it was just really hard for me to be in olds when i first got there and people are all like talking about you or whispering about you and then you hear about these things years later or and you're like oh my gosh I have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> that was just an example of what I was talking about. Travel is an, is another thing or another topic that that we could talk about. But it's uh, I think it's important to understand like where we came from and why we do the things that we do, and and understanding that like we weren't meant to be cooped up in one place. I don't think so. I don't feel that way. But I also feel that we don't. Our bodies weren't meant to be in constant, continual stress, which they are. So we have to do things to reduce our stress levels. And that's based around action. And the most challenging part is that when we're stressed out, we don't take action. When we're stressed out, we, we go into like, we curl up in a ball, depending on what's, what level of stress we're at, but we curl up in a ball and we don't actually do things. We don't actually do things to reduce the stress in our life. And you know what's interesting is that I've been hosting Exploring Mind and Body for a long time. And in most cases, when I ask an ask expert how they reduce their stress level or how they, or sorry, well, let me let me take a step back. I ask them what's one of the most beneficial things that they, I was going to go right into breathing. Shh, spoiler alert. I ask them what are some of the most benefit, what's one of the most beneficial things to improve their 
client or customer's health, and that's to reduce stress. That's the number one thing that they recommend is finding ways to reduce stress. And then how to do that is breathing, which I kind of let the cat out of the bag there. But so that's the number one thing that I recommend. And like when we're uh, when we're upset, stressed, anxious, we start breathing short. Like we we like we probably don't notice it, but we're like we have really short breaths, and we're all tight and angry, and we got stress in our shoulders. And I think that a lot of that come goes to your lower back as well, because our body's all connected. But if we don't learn to manage our breathing, then it makes it very difficult for us to reduce stress levels. So. Breathing, it doesn't have to be, like I suggest meditation, I meditate every day, but if that's not for you, then it could be prayer, for example, it could be quiet time, it could be just simple breath work. You know, like, I think most people have heard that if you're in it, if you have, you know, people that have anger management problems, <laughs> they, have, they have to like, before you react, you take some deep breaths. But I think in many cases, a lot of people don't think before they react, it's just reaction. So instead of like you get an argument or if you have uh, something that comes up and you're kind of upset about it, instead of breathing, thinking about it, reducing your stress levels, people just are on attack mode. They're just like, you know, like you did this to me, you did that to me instead of maybe we should think about this. And I think it's super important to think (laughs) before you react and consider what you say before you say it because words definitely play an impact in any type of relationship. So breathing is is number one. It's always at the top of the list. Of course, exercise to reduce the stress levels, it's gotta be there. Breathing goes along with exercise. It's really difficult to exercise and not breathe. (laughs) So while you're exercising, you actually breathe more often. So they go hand in hand. So number one, number two, or number two, number one, you can't really do one without the other. So reducing stress through exercise Unfortunately, you look at the holidays, for example, or like around Christmas is the most stressful time of year. Finances, family, gifts. That's when people exercise the least amount. So that is something definitely worth mentioning or noting is that you have to get out. You have to get moving, especially when you're stressed out. But like avoiding foods. Excuse me. Just give me one second here. Avoiding foods that cause stress. I talked about that earlier. That's important. Avoiding stressful situations, stressful people. Like we have to create space and and that's so difficult for a lot of people to understand, but you have to create space between those people that cause stress in your life. Those people that bring you down, negative, toxic, don't really have many things much positive to say. You need to create space because many times we have like, we're stacked up. We have all these negative people in our lives. And there's no room for positivity to come in. So if you are able to create just a little bit of space between yourself and negativity, then you allow more positive to come in. And then the more positive that comes in, the further away you can separate yourself from negativity, which will help reduce stress. It's really difficult in the workplace. A lot of people are stressed out in the workplace. Could be a boss, manager, coworker, whatever it is. And that, that that takes more time and effort, but especially if it's a boss, if it's a coworker, you can probably talk to your boss and say, "Hey, <laughs> this isn't working out. Could I get some separation?" But if it's a boss, you kind of got to find a new job. <laughs> so that, which is again definitely more challenging. But there's definitely action steps that you can take. You can take action steps. You can make a difference in your life. You can reduce stress, and it's important. And it's important to understand it is possible, but we have to take these action steps. I feel like food is so important when it comes to reducing stress in our lives. And remember earlier I talked about inflammation, reducing inflammation, reducing stress, feeling better about ourselves. Like, usually when we have a good meal, like I had a nice stir fry yesterday, I had a beautiful stir fry, had all kinds of different color. It was green, it was crunchy, it was tasty. And I felt good after, like my body was like, yes, thank you. And I felt good mentally, emotionally, physically. And then compare that to like, I used to talk about when I got, when I eat, we used to eat blizzards and I would get like belly aches or even now I still enjoy like a big bowl of pasta, but now I've reduced that. And there's nothing wrong with it. Fine, clean ingredients. I love capers, black and green olives, hot peppers. But I used to have a big bowl of it and I would just eat it up. (laughs) But, and I never felt good after it. I was always like, after it, I was like, uh, that's a completely different feeling between having like a quinoa salad 
or in that really nice stir fry and then you have a big you know a big bowl of pasta nothing wrong with pasta i'm just saying you feel different so understand that that's putting different stress levels on your body if you're eating cleaner foods if you're eating healthier foods lighter foods foods that are easy to easier to burn off that's a completely different feeling and it does different things to you internally physically mentally emotionally so give that a try especially if you're stressed out again the problem is when we're stressed out we go to those fatty foods we go to sugar we go to the pantry we hit the chips and the pop we sit there in the field position which only digs our hole deeper so and don't get me wrong i get stressed out too but when i'm stressed out i try to go do something like i try to I try to go for a, a bike ride or for a run a run's a good one for me when i'm stressed out i don't really enjoy running that much i do run once or twice a week for to get fresh air to get outside to get active for health benefits but when i'm stressed out i'll go and run because that feels like i can like get my stress out we have to find different ways i was in doing some interviews in the past and people like recommended like yelling into a pillow i guess not really my thing but that might work for you or throw like throwing something into a, i don't know what she was there's another lady was saying something like throwing something like ice cubes at a brick wall or something but well, everyone has their di- like something different and like, every expert says something a bit different as well but for, for me it's got to be breathing it's got to be exercise it's getting moving getting active the food that we're putting in our body. And then, of course, our environment. This is what we talk about on a regular basis. Our, our fitness family is super supportive, super happy. That's why we love them so much. That's why we've created that group of positivity. And when we have a problem, we can go there. We can go to our group and we can we can vent and we can ask for advice and we can ask for help. So it's important to have that those people in your lives or those places that you can go to reduce some stress. The only problem is you have to... You have to understand to not use them as a crutch. I feel like sometimes if we get into like complaining mode, then you're always complaining, and it gets into be and gets into a habit of always complaining. You never want to like just dump all your problems on somebody else. You want to have a a mutual relationship. Listen once in a while. You know, like how many times you sit across from someone and all they do is talk the whole time. And you're like, and like, oh, you're such a good listener. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I wanted to, I wanted to talk. I know I'm a good listener, but I wanted to talk too. Sometimes you sit in a meeting, and I would imagine afterwards, sometimes people would be like, "Oh, I wanted to talk, but so and so they dominated the conversation so much. All I did was talk the whole time." So it should be a pleasant relationship where there's give and take. So consider that next time you have an issue and you're talking to someone about, ask them how they're doing. Ask them if there's something that you can do to help them out instead of always. I would say taking, but always giving your stress. You know, you, you like sometimes we put stress on other people and that's that's a challenge. Like you don't want to be a person that's always dumping your stress on someone else. You want to be able to take some of their stress off their shoulders too. And hopefully you can not carry that on yourself. But um, I am going to wrap things up here. Thanks everyone for joining me. Thank you for whoever's coming in and out and for conversations. And I will catch you. All the best in reducing your stress. If you have any stress questions, let us know. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks again for joining me. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on facebook.com slash trueformlife. We post stuff there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge, Tabata challenge, whatever it may be we'd love to have you join us we're also on instagram.com slash drew tadia again we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track our main website is trueformlife.com if you want to check out some of our products some of our services or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more we got all that at trueformlife.com. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadio, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening.
You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.